just because I want a Bugatti doesn't mean that the Bugatti dealer is obligated to bring the price of their product down to my level. I have to go where I am able to afford. Greetings, everyone. It's your boy, Perry Walker, and welcome back to my channel where I help build strong Christian marriages that last. Now, today I have this young, beautiful black woman who's going to explain why she cannot date down on her socioeconomic class, but it's not what you think, though. Now, I may stop it from time to time to give a little bit of my commentary, so let's hear what she has to say. Someone asked me recently what my thoughts were on dating outside of my social class and I answered that I would quite literally never do that and here's why. And for the purpose of this question, I took social class to sort of mean like socioeconomic class. So my economic status, maybe around how much money I make, the social status, like perhaps the caliber of school that I went to and the spaces that I found myself in as a result and the people I found myself surrounded by. And then also like the lifestyle I've created for myself that's a combination of like the economic status and the school and the spaces and all of that. I think you guys get how that fits together. It's important to note that I did not grow up with a lot of money. My father went to prison when I was four years old. During that time and all the time after, like my mom has been a public school teacher, so they don't make a lot of money when we first moved to Atlanta. We lived in a two bedroom apartment with seven people sharing one bathroom. Like I literally shared the bottom bunk of a bunk bed with my second oldest brother. And then my oldest brother and my sister-in-law were on the top bunk of that bed. Okay, we were not a Jack and Jill family, okay? Money was not we didn't have a lot of it. So knowing my circumstances, when I was like 12 years old, I made this vision board for myself. My mom actually found recently in her storage unit. I had basically carved out my entire life, like what I was gonna do in high school to make sure I could get into an Ivy League college, and what I was gonna do with that college to make sure I could get into a certain law school or buy a certain car and have a certain apartment or home, like all of these things I had planned out. And I knew that because my family didn't have the same financial resources someone else's did or access to certain people to get me into doors, I had to open them myself. So that's what I did. I created an insane amount of opportunities for myself by literally putting my blood, sweat, and tears into everything I did. From the time that I was 12 years old until now, like 23, I was so intentional about every decision I made, whether it was not dating in high school or not drinking or prioritizing school or... Wow. Wow, wow, wow. That is impressive. Now, I first caught this on the Anton Daniels show, and surprisingly, he and I agree on a lot of what she said. Now, you can imagine how the fellows responded in the comments in regards to this. They were saying, oh, she's going to be the next Ebony K. And to be quite honest, if she doesn't temper off her life with a little bit more balance, that could be a possibility. But I don't get Ebony K vibes from her. And there's a reason why as we continue to watch the video. And I certainly don't get the sprinkle sprinkle. It's obvious that this young lady sacrificed a lot. She sacrificed a lot. She sacrificed dating. She hit the books. She didn't go to the party. She didn't do all the crazy stuff that a lot of us jokers did in high school. At least I know I goofed off a lot of time. And sounds like when she went to college, she was focused. She I don't know if she joined a sorority or not. I don't think so. Because those places, you know, require a lot of time. And I think somewhere, I don't know if she mentioned it already, she managed to collect over $500,000 in scholarships to pay for her school because she didn't want any student debt. So that means that she was probably paying attention to a lot of what happens to a lot of young ladies that do go to college and have to get all them doggone student loans. She knew that her mom didn't have the money. She couldn't rely on her dad. He was in prison. Her siblings were living at home with them in a two-bedroom. My Lord, it reminds me of when me and my wife first started out. Very young, very ambitious, and I understand her position to some degree. Now, I think that her drive is motivated by some of the living condition trauma that she's experienced, and she may have to get a little bit of therapy to help balance her life because... There's not very many men her age that's at her level. Heck, there's not a whole lot of men that's older than her that's at her level, especially black men. But they're there. But with that being said, if she does decide to date inside of her socioeconomic class, 
the man is going to have to be in his late 30s, mid 30s, early 40s. And I don't know if that's something that she's willing to do. Maybe she will. Maybe she's already doing it. Trying to get different scholarships. I did everything in my power to make sure that the life I was creating for myself while I was kind of stepping into the autonomy that I would have as a young adult, even as a teenager going into a young adult, being able to create the life I want to, that I was doing everything in my power to have something different than what I had growing up. And of course, I didn't have to do this. I didn't have to stay up all night applying to scholarships to earn over half a million dollars to go to college. I didn't have to apply to Columbia and do all the things that is required to get into a school like that, but I wanted to because I wanted to have a certain life. Even when it comes to content, when I started making content, I was taking 19 credit hours. I was working three days a week in office at my internship, but then I was also working with a tech startup virtually. And then I also started doing content and it was probably one of the hardest times in my life. But again, I knew that I wanted to set myself up for greatness and that is what was required. So knowing that, understanding how much work I put into the person that I wanted to be in the life I wanted to have, feels so unfair to me now and also to my younger self who was just so forward thinking and like put so many things on the back burner to prioritize the life that I would have right now for me to date someone who cannot she says some important things that I think both men and women can take away from her you know she made a lot of sacrifices guys and it would be easy to point fingers at this girl and say, oh, she's one of them uppity women. Oh, she thinks she deserves. Man, look, there are some men that are working like she's working, young and old. When she says she deserves, now, I don't disagree with her on that. I mean, my Lord, I, I didn't have that type of discipline as a young man. And even now as an older man, I'm not going to do what she's doing. Most people aren't. Most women aren't. So she carved out a life that she wants. But again, I think one of the things she did not really consider is balance. And also, too, I, I never heard her mention when she talks about dating someone within her social economic class character. And that's something that Anton beamed in on, too, because there's a lot of people that make a lot of money. But. There's also a lot of people that make a lot of money that are scoundrels, okay? There's a lot of people that make money that don't mean you any good. And her being so young and probably are going to have to date an older man, a much older man, um, if she doesn't have that, that street wiseness about her to be able to peep out a scoundrel, it could turn out bad for her and it could be more of a saboteur for her, okay? And... That's something that she really has to consider. So hopefully she has a counselor on speed dial that can help her gather her thoughts, gather her ambitions, and help her focus. Now, I'm a Christian, so I believe in prayer. I don't know if she believes in prayer, but I know that if you don't have God guiding your path, directing your path, boy, you'd like, Daniel's in the lion den, you know, you you are amongst wolves out here. And she is so young. I don't look at that skyline, man. Look at that. I don't know if that's her place or not, or if that's a hotel, but my lord, you know, she's doing the dang own thing. And I don't get the Ebony K vibes, like I said, I don't get the sprinkle sprinkle vibes. Uh much different from most women that have crazy demands on men. She put in the work. <laughs> she put in the work, guys. So a lot of us guys, well, I'm married. So I'm and I'm celebrating my 28th anniversary tomorrow. But check it. A lot of you young guys, look, if y'all want a young lady that's beautiful like this, even if they're not as ambitious as she is, you know, these young ladies, they want a man of substance, a man that's about something. You know, you can't be so stuck on your video games and playing that stuff or saying, well, she's just going to get what I give her. You know, she has to be thankful. And I do believe that young ladies need to be thankful and they need to be appreciative. But at the same time, you got to ask yourself, what are you doing to set yourself up for success so that you can create a good space, maybe not like her, but a good space 
for the woman that you want to marry, for the family that you want to have. Something to think about. Give me the life that I've always wanted. Like they can't match it. I don't even need you to give it to me because I've already gotten it for myself. But if you can't be right there with me, it's not fair to me to lower my standards or accept certain things that I knew I never wanted to, which is why I work so hard on myself just so that I can be with you. And it is not lost on me the fact that a lot of guys my age are just not going to have what I have because I'm in a very unique position to make an insane amount of money for someone my age. And Bingo. She said it. She understands. She's fully aware <laughs> that most men her age, she's 23 years old, are not going to be where she's at. Now, there are some unicorns like her because she is a unicorn, guys. No student loan debt, a good paying job, beautiful, smart, witty, you know, unicorn. Now, my wife and I are friends with a couple whose son went to MIT and he just graduated last year, and he works for Google. And he makes over 300 k a year. And he's a unicorn. I mean, he's tall, he's good-looking, and he's black. Even though he makes that type of money, he's I think he's younger than her. I think he's 22. He's Mentally, he's not ready for a relationship. And he's not even dating right now, from what I understand. But here's the big but. Ladies like her are going to have to date up in, in age, even if the guy that they do meet is in her socioeconomic class and happens to be her, in, happens to be her age. It's a maturity thing because obviously her drive and, and for success has matured her a lot, well beyond the years of a young buck. Where the other part of the socioeconomic status comes in, I need to at least see that you have worked as hard as I have to put yourself into certain spaces, to open up certain doors for yourself, to go to certain schools or whatever it is, because you have this intrinsic ambition and drive, because you know that you also have your eyes set on the sort of lifestyle that I do, and that is what you're actively working towards every day. Not having that does not make you a bum, it doesn't make you undesirable, it doesn't make you an unattractive man or anything, it just makes you incompatible with me and the lifestyle that bingo again and again that's what sets her apart from ebony k and the sprinkle sprinkle lady and other women that are very delusional she does not put down men that don't have the type of drive and you know one of the things that i believe she also mean is she's including men that may make as much money as she does but don't have the type of drive that she does. To her, you know, you're going to have to show a certain level of personality and ambition that matches who you are as a person and even your income. She doesn't put ordinary men down. She just says they're not compatible for her. Now, I was thinking about this and some of those comments that these guys made and forgive me for the crude example that I'm getting ready to use. Now, I'm not much of a car person, but I heard that Bugatti's, if I pronounce that correct, is a pretty high dollar car. Some of them cars can get up to cost in $500,000, $800,000, a million dollars, depending upon the trim and the custom features you put into it, right? Now, say if I wanted that car and I went up to a Bugatti dealer and I told them what I wanted. They told me the price. And I told them, hey, look, this is what I have. Now, the the representative probably would say, you know, I, I feel what you're saying, but you're probably going to be better off getting a Toyota. Because here, we sell at this price. Okay? So just because I want a Bugatti doesn't mean that the Bugatti dealer is obligated to bring the price of their product down to my level. I have to go where I am able to afford, okay? Now, she's a Bugatti. There are men that can accommodate who she is. And the men that can accommodate that, we can't be salty about it. Now... The problem she may run into is that because she may have to date an older man, is that older man going to want children? 
And if he's going to want children and family, is he going to want her to be a stay-at-home mom? And if she wants her to be a stay-at-home mom, is she willing to give up all she has worked for to be a stay-at-home mom? And then there's another side. Say if she said, well, I don't want children right now. And then she meets a guy, oh, I don't want kids, ever. And he's an older man, because he's going to have to be an older man. And then one day, as they're, you know, they, they've been married for a while, she wants children. Then he says, I told you I didn't want children. That could be a problem. So there's a lot of things that I think that she really needs to think about. Right now, she's riding this high. She's still young. She's still very driven. And I don't think she really had the time to settle in there and think about those things. I want to have. I appreciate the drive that I have and the confidence that has been instilled in me because of all the things I've been able to do for myself. And I really appreciate that and other potential partners as well. So if I'm really considering like seriously, seriously dating someone, not just like a casual date, whatever, this is something that is a requirement for me. It's not like, a, oh, I hope, or maybe I will. I've tried it before. I'm not doing it. This is what I require. And I don't think it's a lot to ask. Shit, I asked it of myself at 12 and look at where I am. Someone asked me recently what my thoughts were now, she mentioned something that I heard a lot of young ladies talk about, uh, even young ladies that are not at her level but are hardworking, that they've tried dating certain guys, right? And then I heard the guys come back and say, well, that's because you were dating the fun guy, the guy who's not about anything. You overlook us guys who are about something. And that may be true. That may be true. I've heard some horror stories even from my own daughter who's in the military, she's getting ready to get out. And when she was over in Macedonia, she dated some guys. And when she told me the stuff that she did for these dudes, as a father, I wanted to go, because a lot of them guys didn't appreciate her. So sisters out there who may watch this video, it's not just black men. So you, you can't point the finger at brothers because... Uh, a person that has bad character and means you no harm can come in black, white, Hispanic, Latin, Greek, Chinese, doesn't matter. You know, a bad person is a bad person. And I believe that people need to be aware of who they are and have some wit about themselves to know when they're walking into a bad situation. But again, I knew that I wanted to set myself up. You can't be right there with me. It's not fair to me to lower my standards or accept certain things that I knew I never wanted to, which is why I work so hard on myself, just so that I can be with you. And it is not lost on me the fact that a lot of guys my age are just not gonna have what I have because I'm in a very unique position to make an insane amount of money for someone my age. And that's where the other part of the socioeconomic status comes in. I need to at least see that you have worked as hard as I have to put yourself in to certain spaces to open up certain doors for yourself to go to certain schools or whatever it is because you have this intrinsic ambition and drive because you know that you also have your eyes set on the sort of lifestyle that I do and that is what you're actively working towards every day. Not having that does not make you a bum. It doesn't make you undesirable. It doesn't make you an unattractive man or anything. It just makes you incompatible with me and the lifestyle that I wanna have. I appreciate the drive that I have and the confidence that has been instilled in me because of all the things I've been able to do for myself and I really appreciate that and other potential partners as well. So if I'm really considering like seriously seriously dating someone not just like a casual date whatever this is something that is a requirement for me it's not like a, oh i hope or maybe i will i've tried it before i'm not doing it this is what i require and i don't think it's a lot to ask shit i asked it of myself at 12 and look at where i am wow um man that honestly that was a good video and i can't disagree with her on much of anything the only thing i will point out again as Anton commented, is that she needs to really look at the character of the man she gets involved with because character is king, is key in everything. And I'm going to add a godly man. Again, I don't know if she goes to church, if she's a Christian, if she believes, you know, what profits a man to gain the whole world yet lose their soul, you know? So hopefully she remembers the Lord in her endeavors. So definitely she worked very hard. Kudos to her. Uh, so young to accomplish so much. And I don't see nothing wrong with that. 
And I'm going to wrap this up, but I'm really, really interested in hearing what you guys have to say in the comments. Now, I have an even mixture, almost 50-50 of men and women who watch my videos, who subscribe to my channel, and I really want to hear what you have to say. Now, think about the sacrifices she made to get to where she's at. She's not the typical Sprinkle Sprinkle or the typical Ebony K or any other woman that has these ideas, hopefully. Young guys, look, you know, some of these women aren't playing, man. They want some good, wholesome, hardworking, ambitious, driven men. But as usual, I'm gonna add, if you're gonna do that, and I do advise every man be the best man they can be, that they're able to be, but don't forget about Christ. And don't forget to like this video so that it can spread across the YouTube algorithm. And if you wanna take it a step further, you could watch another one of my videos that's up there and subscribe if you haven't already done so. And until the next time, I will see you on the next one. Peace.